Hello everyone, I'm Kim Crable on set with the Coffee with Kim show. We're back in California filming a brand new series. You're not going to believe who's stopping by for coffee. Come on in, join us. And I've got the joy deep down in my heart. I'm waking up with your love from the start. I'm chasing the rainbow through the rain. I know it's gonna, it's gonna, it's gonna be a beautiful day. As a young man, today's guest truly believed that Christianity was worthless. Yet, for the past five decades, he has devoted himself to equipping true followers of Jesus everywhere to live out and share their Christian faith with full confidence that it is reliable, relational, and relevant to their lives. In that time, our guest today has delivered more than 27,000 talks to over 25 million people in 125 countries. He has written or co-authored 148 books, including More Than a Carpenter and Evidence That Demands a Verdict. And his books have been translated into 128 different languages. His ministry has helped generations of young people worldwide stand strong and firm in their faith, even in the face of a rapidly changing culture. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the first show of our fifth season of Coffee, Conversations of Friends of Faith to Encourage and Equip. I'm Kim Crapel, deeply honored and always delighted to be your host. In all my dreams, I would have never considered that I'd be sitting with someone who has and continues to touch so many lives for the sake of Christ. I've been in the audiences of thousands listening and being inspired by his wisdom. But today, today, when we return, we will have joining us the one and only Mr. Josh McDowell. When you sit in a group of men that, are, that have a high level of trust and compassion for one another, amazing things happen in those conversations. I think it's incredibly valuable because strain, burden, stress, hardship are inevitable. You're not going to live a life without that. It happens. Once it happens, the only thing we have after that is how we deal with it. And we have two options. One, bottle it up and never talk about it or pretend it doesn't exist. Or option two is try to talk about it in a constructive way that helps you grow. And the importance of this for men in a non-judgmental way be able to sit and talk in that way about real issues and real problems is life altering. What you realize quickly is that all the group of men that you're sitting there with who at the beginning you don't know are all facing very similar challenges in their faith and in their lives. For many people and many of us there were things we were carrying for a long time that we didn't even know we were carrying because we had them for so long and when you finally let them go it changes the way you see the world. It changes the way that you operate. Is once you find that burden and address, start to address that burden, that's when the healing begins. And for men, ad addressing that burden privately, let alone publicly, is massively difficult. It's a nonprofit ministry, so like any ministry, it relies on donations. Donations go to books, donations go to hosting events that bring people in. Every event that we have changes someone's life. There are a few things in your life or in the world that you can do that have that impact and we're here to tell you that it has that impact. So if you're interested in having your life change for the better, if you feel a voice in your head calling you and saying you want something more or you feel like you could do more, I'd encourage you to go to kimcrable.org and check it out. Uh, this is an opportunity for you to not only change your path and your faith journey, but also an opportunity for you to grow your family's journey as well. So join us, Confront and Conquer, at kimcrable.org or on Facebook. We'd love to see you there and connect with you. Hello everyone and welcome back to Coffee, conversations of friends of faith to encourage and equip and like I promised, look who we have sitting with us, Mr. Josh McDowell. Thank you so much for well, joining us. You know how many years I've waited for you to invite me to be on your <laughs> program? This is like dying and going to heaven, almost, <laughs> almost. 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 <laughs> almost. You're so kind and sweet and you just put everybody at, at such 
ease. Thank you. I remember when I was thinking about inviting you, I thought, oh, I don't even think that he would have the time. And, and you made the time, and I just thank you. Every author dreams of being invited to an interview. Never yeah. forget that. Okay, I won't. Well, I thank you for coming and sitting on the sofa with us. One of the things that when I was going through your paperwork that really impressed me out of all the things that you've done, oh my goodness, and we talked about that as in the intro, but out of all the things that you accomplished, you said that your greatest ministry is to your family. So let's talk about that a little bit. Tell us about your family. Well, I've had the privilege of being married 50 years and about eight months to one of the most incredible women God ever created, and I'm serious. Mm -hmm. She has changed my life more than Jesus, but it was Jesus through her right. effect. And then we have four children, three daughters and a son that I never dreamed you could have a family who truly, really love each other. <laughs> they want to be together. We want a vacation together, everything. And then 11 grandkids. Let me tell you, grandkids are not cheap. <laughs> My wife says, whatever you spend on one, you got to spend on all of them. I said, they won't know. I said, but the parents will. There you go. <laughs> Let me ask you, what do they call you? Pops, granddad, what, uh, what do they call you? Papa Josh. Papa Josh. Oh, I love that. I'm Gigi. So we only have two grandchildren, but boy, how they just totally change your life. Yeah. They always if say, I knew grandkids were so good, I'd jumped over the kids. Well, you, that's uh, what I was getting ready to say. Someone said you should have just gone to the grandchildren first, but it just doesn't work that way, does it? Yeah. <laughs> well, that's great. What an amazing family you've created because from reading your books and seeing the, the movie that was released, it's like um, maybe you're a little bit like me. Your, your prayer was always have that family, and I think that's probably why it's priority to all of us. Well, growing up, I did not want the kind of family I grew up in. Mm -hmm. I didn't want to be a father like my father was, and I didn't want a marriage like my parents had. Mm -hmm. and, uh, but I didn't know how to change. Right. So I just watched people. I read the scriptures, what are some of the principles there? Yes. And then I watched people who had, seemed to have really great marriages, good relationship with their kids, and I learned from them. I always say I, I became a, a fairly good father, I think, through plagiarizing <laughs> yeah. <That's>, other people. <laughs> yeah, you know, I did the same thing. and I. One of the things that I think that is powerful about having a past that maybe you weren't happy in, it gives you guidance into what you do want. And sometimes I think that makes you a better parent, a grandparent. I wasn't quite sure what I really wanted, but I was absolutely sure of what I didn't yes. want. Yes, yes. Absolutely. And that really motivated me. Yeah, and that, uh, that, that's a guiding factor. But if I hadn't come to Christ, I couldn't have the family that I have. I couldn't. Right. Not with my background and all. Well, absolutely, because with people like you and I, statistically, we should have been abusive, angry alcoholics. But statistics are broken in, with Christ, right? And yep. that's the message more than anything that I want the audience to get today is that no matter where you are or where you've come from, that when you find the freedom in Christ, everything can change. And that is so obvious in the movie that, of your story that yeah. just came out, Undaunted, which we have a trailer. So oh. can we watch that? And then let's talk about it. I just want to see you graduate from high school. And then I want to die. Die? I can't go on, son. Rock more! I'll kill you! Oh. You hear me? No, Josh. Mom. <laughs> Promise me that you will never, ever be an alcoholic. Promise me that you'll be the kind of son that I can be proud of. Sure, Mom. No, promise me. Promise me. I promise. <laughs> oh, how could you ever love a father like me? I built that house! And promised it to your son. My hell I did! You were too drunk to remember! Get on out of here! <laughs> Crying's not gonna do anyone any good, Josh. 
I'm sorry, Pastor. This is just too much to ask. I'm not asking you, Josh. If you ever touch me again, I'll kill you. You understand me? Huh? No one understands. Dad, I have something to say to you. Even if he did exist, how could a man who lived 2,000 years ago possibly influence someone's life today? Well, I guess that's what you'll need to find out. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. It's true. It's true. It's hard to, I see the emotion, what are you, what are you thinking? It just, it's, <laughs> it brings back too many memories, that's why it's hard to watch. Yeah, you know? even to this day, the pain. Yeah, you would think uh, years later it would go away, but mm -mm. whatever happens to you when you're a kid stays with you pretty much for your whole life. Yes. Yeah. You, uh. Um, but let me tell you, I, I'd probably be an emotional total basket case if I hadn't been able to lead my father to Christ, yes, and at least for a year, whew, to a year and a half, know what it meant to have a father who loved you. That year and a half greatly impacted my life. How? What happened? It gave me a model. See, we learn about love not just through stating it, saying it, but through seeing it modeled. Yes. And I was part of a model of love between a father and a son for about 14 months before he died. Mm -hmm. And I tell my children, I tell my grandkids, you're benefiting from that 14 months. Yes. Not the years that went before. Yes. Yeah. Yes. You um, made that happen. And I believe that when Christ touched your heart, he called you to some really hard things, like sitting in that restaurant and telling your dad that you forgave him. But see, the backstory of that, after I became a Christian, I still hated my dad so much. So I called him up, made an appointment at a 50 diners, well, of course, it was in the 50s, <laughs> to have lunch with him, because I was gonna tell him how much I hated him and never wanted to see him again. So that was the to, intention. Yes, I went to the diner, sat there, and the waitress took her, they walked off to the right, and I said, Dad, I've come here to tell you that I love you. And boom! I mean, I really don't know who was most surprised, my father hearing it or me saying it. Kim, that's when I knew something had happened in my life, mm. that Christ made a difference. I wasn't used, I was used to loving those I wanted to love, hating those I wanted to hate. Mm -hmm. I never had the capacity to love those who I chosen to hate. And that's when I knew Christ had made a difference in my life. And what a difference, what a difference. So, you know, I look at your life and when I watch the movie, of course I've read your books, I've been in the audiences of thousands listening to you and, and the way you present the gospel and the love. Of all people, you could have had excuses to not serve God. And I feel like that we have so many people in our audience today that are gonna be listening and they're gonna be saying, that, you know, they were abused, they, they had alcoholic dads, they had all these things. And somehow, I know as a child, a product of some of that, I felt for so long that that negated my ability to truly serve God. Speak to those people today that are still feeling held back because of their past. I felt the same way, but you know, it's really wrong thinking. Mm -hmm. It's kind of uh, screwed up thinking because Jesus didn't come to die for the righteous. Everything I read in the Bible, Christ came to die for the lost, yes. the sinners, the, the thieves, the killers, or everyone, mm. uh, the broken homes, everything. And so uh, that's why God sent his son into the world mm. to save the unrighteous. Yeah. Uh, people like myself and you and others and people watching right here today. So I think you need to realize God is greater than any problem in your life. Mm. And I think I'm a walking example of that. Yeah. But I had to come to the point where I deeply inside knew I needed him. Mm -hmm. 
I had to know one, I had a problem. Mm -hmm. Second, I had to realize I can't solve my own problem. But third, I had to realize Christ can. Mm -hmm. Christ can. Yeah. And so that brought me to Christ. Absolutely. So when did but you... Let me tell you, even yes. if you come to Christ, you're, if you're married, your spouse plays such a vital role, whether you're a man, it's your wife, or you're the wife and it's a husband, they play such a vital role. It's Christ and your spouse working together brings about change. And often the hurting side is the spouse yes. is, is a part of the problem, not part of the answer. What do you mean by that? Well, is where you're struggling with things and your spouse is an alcoholic. Mm -hmm. or just a downright liar or a loser. Mm -hmm. uh, I hate to call anyone a loser. Uh, but if you're married to someone like that and then you're struggling to get whole yourself, mm -hmm. your spouse is not able to work alongside you like Dottie was with me. Mm. Uh, because I wouldn't, be, I wouldn't be sitting here with you without Dottie. Mm. How did you meet her? <laughs> I went into this bar, no. <laughs> I was at the University of Texas speaking outdoors. I was standing on the student steps of the student union, about, I don't know, 1,500, 2,000 students out. And I looked way to their side and I saw this woman, a bright orange, a little different dress than yours, a bright orange dress. And I just stopped and right in front of her, and I said this reverently. <laughs> I said, oh my God, what a beautiful woman, right out loud. Well, everyone turned and looked, and I said, you right there have that bright colored dress on. Are you a Christian? Everybody's pointing to her, and she said, I said, yeah, you. She said, yes. I said, what's your name? And she said, Dottie. <laughs> I said, come on up here. Because I knew when I finished, I couldn't go back and meet her uh -huh. because people crowd around you and everything. And so I said, come on up here. So I, finished, I continued speaking. I saw her come up. So I thought, i got to have a good spiritual reason for doing this. <laughs> so I said to my security, let her through when she comes up. So she came up, stood about this far from me, and I stopped my talk, and, and I said, in just a minute, I'd like to introduce you. And so this made it spiritual. I said, tell everyone what Christ has done in your life. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if I was led by the Holy Spirit or my hormones. <laughs> so I introduced her. Oh, my gosh. She had, you have to understand, in those days, crowds were scary. I mean, they threw pig urine on you, blood, everything. Mm -hmm. And she held that crowd in the palm of her hand when she talked about Christ. And I stood back there and said, I'm going to marry that woman. Aww. I didn't. I never told her that. Mm -hmm. And two months later, we got engaged, and four months later, we were married. Mm -hmm. And that was 50-some years ago. What a great <laughs> story. Now I wish you'd brought her. I can't wait to meet her. Well, I, I, I was brokenhearted when you didn't invite her. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that means we'll have to do this no, again. No, she's away today. Yes, is she? Yeah. Well, let me ask you this, Mr. McDowell. When you think about... Please call me Josh. It, oh, are you Mr. sure? Mr. McDowell sounds so old and formal. <laughs> All right, Josh it is. So let me, to, to those who are listening... And this is part of my passion because for so many years I felt so unworthy and, and of God's work and, and his calling. And, and it really stifled me. And I just know that there are so many people out there. How did even your past, you know, make your ministry even that much better? How did it influence it in a positive way? Well, I think the promise of God is when he says he will cause all things to work out together for the good. What happened to me as a child wasn't good. Right. But God has used it for the good. Uh, in many ways, I'm thankful for the personal testimony I have of coming to Christ. Now, I wish to God it had been different. But yet I can thank God for a testimony because so, and it breaks my heart, that so many people out there identify with it. Mm -hmm. And as a result, it yes. gives me a platform to share Christ in the midst of agony and hurt and all. And uh, so when somebody says to me, how do you know? I said, I've been there. Right. I've been there. But for so many years, people really didn't know your story, did they? No, because I, I, I was embarrassed to tell anyone. And I, I thought that if, if I started telling my background, then that would identify me as a certain individual and everybody would look at me that way. I see. Well, you know, that was a prophecy. Yes. People do look at me that way, but I never realized until they wanted to do the movie of my life, and I fought it. 
I had many people want to do a movie, and uh, I just said no. And uh, then these people, I saw a movie they did, and I went, wow, that was powerful. Yeah. So I called them up and I said, if you do a movie in my life, I want these people to do it. And um, called them up, and you always hope when you call somebody, like raising money, they know who you are. Yeah. You know, <laughs> oh, the Josh McDowell? So then, you, ah, the door's open, you walk in. And so I called him up and I said, hi, this is Josh McDowell. Long silence. I went, oh, no. And then they said, the real Josh McDowell? I said, yes, Lord, I'm in the door. And I said, would you do a, a movie of my life? And they said, this has been one of our dreams for 10 years. Wow. And so they did it. Mm -hmm. And it was at that point I realized that God can use a broken life to his glory. Even more so, don't you think? I mean, you read the Old Testament, you read these stories. To me, that is, out of everything I knew about you, and, and I too related, so I'm one of those who relate to so much of that, of your story. But to I'm me, sorry. it just gives, oh, thank you. But to me, it gives so much hope. I mean, I feel like we all look at you now and go, gosh, you had so many excuses to not do God's work, but you did. You had so many reasons to to just be paralyzed by the hurt and the pain, but you didn't allow it? Well, I didn't allow a lot of it. I'm still paralyzed by some of it. I still make so many mistakes. I'm sure you have. I've said things that, oh, Lord, I wished I'd never said that. <laughs> yes, of course. And then it haunts you for a couple of years because now with the Internet, everybody in the world hears yes. what, a good, bad, and ugly. Yes. Uh, they hear it. But uh, I'm not what I used to be, and I'm not what I'm going to be. Mm. But you know, Kim, I'm really enjoying the process yes. between the two. Yes. Yes, that's what I, I talk to women so many times, and I talk about how each and every day our goal is to become more like God. And I said, to me, that's exciting because this isn't the best version of Kim. It's going to get better, hopefully. <laughs> so it's encouraging, isn't it? Well, it is. It's when I hear so many people come to Christ through my testimony and all, yeah. it's probably one of the greatest encouragements in my life to keep going. Yes. I mean, I'm not a youngster. Yes. I'm 81 years old. I mean, God said, let there be light. I flipped the switch. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, oh. and yet I never knew 81 would feel so great. I uh, know. I just feel great. I got energy. My legs are strong. I did my three and a half, four miles this morning. Good and, for you. Uh, everything, yeah. yeah. And so no matter what your age, your background, ever, mm -hmm. everyone's testimony is unique. Yes. Yes. And so be yourself. Yes. yes. If I want to be like somebody else, then who's going to be me? Right. And God created each one of us as an original to the world. Yes. And so like you said, I just want to become the original that God created me to be, with mm -hmm. the good, the bad, and the ugly. That's right. Every day, a little step at a time. We have to take a short break, but when we get back, I have a little surprise for you. So stay tuned. A Corvette. Well, <laughs> let's see what it is. We'll be right back. <laughs> Burdens to Blessings cherished, infinitely more, perfectly imperfect. These are just some of the many books, DVDs, and teaching series available on KimCrable.org. You can find all of her merchandise at KimCrable.org slash shop. Hello everyone and welcome back to Coffee. Well, our time has flown by and I can't thank you enough for stopping by to visit with us, but there's something that we have to talk about. Your book, I love, I love all your books, but there was just something about this with your mom and we saw it in the trailer. When your mom looked at you and she said, Josh promised me three things, that you won't be an alcoholic, that you won't swear, and that you'll be someone that I'm proud of. You know, I just can't imagine how delighted she must be. And I loved reading the end of the story where you were able to tell uh, about Aunt, Aunt Emma, knowing that she was a believer. But, you know, we can see that you took those words to heart. And not only have you been affecting generations, 
but now all the new generations, your word, the Bible talks about in Psalms about becoming a voice of hope. I have a little surprise for you for someone that's just, it, it, it needs a verdict, a evidence of verdict of someone who um, you're truly oh, affecting man. You got new my generations. interest up now. Here we go. Let's watch this really quickly. Hey, Josh. Alan Williamson here. Boy, it's been a while since we've last seen each other, back when I had the privilege to portray your younger self in the film Undaunted. Um, I gotta tell you, I was excited to hear that you were gonna be on Kim's show this week. You know, a lot of people still tell me to this day about how much of an impact your story through your film has made in their lives and the lives of their local communities and their church families. It really was an honor to be a part of something so special. And I continue to pray that you and your ministry are widely used to touch many more hearts in this world. And it's very exciting to see what he's doing through you. God bless, brother. He's a friend of oh, mine. Well, I was just thinking, <laughs> I wonder, I'd love to see him again. And all of a sudden, here He are. played you in the movie. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that. Yes. Brings back a lot of memories. I know. And he just talks about how honored he was to be able to step into your shoes and just to pretend you know that he was you for just a minute and how you are touching these generations from my heart from my family from everyone in my ministry thank you for being josh mcdowell hey remember you said those three things my mother said they were the last things that she said to me before she died and you probably remember most the last thing someone did and that someone said. Yes. And those three rings, three items still ring in my head. Yes. With mom saying it. Mm. And uh, I think with that, it helped me a lot. Oh. Uh, but please don't get it wrong. I make a lot of mistakes in life. I don't want to hear that. I do things that <laughs> I wish to God I never did. But. Uh, at least God is gracious, more than some Christians are, but Absolutely. God, is, gra Absolutely. God is gracious. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for being with us. What an incredible and inspiring time this has been. It reminds me that no matter how our lives begin, we can, with Christ, become who God wants us to be and all that He has planned for us to do. Thank you for helping us see that today. Nothing, audience, nothing, friends, has the power to hold us back. We are bound by no earthly statistics if we have found our freedom in Christ. This is such a timely message that Mr. McDowell, Josh, has given to us to see the very concept of truth come into us into this crazy time in which we live. Yet you continue to challenge us to keep telling the doubting world about a loving God who is passionate and just desires a relationship with each and every one of us. We can keep praying and doing our part in helping those around us come to know Jesus as you came to know Jesus and understand what it is, what his truth is, and to learn how to live out our faith. Thank you, audience, so much for joining us for coffee today. Thank you so much, Mr. Josh McDowell, for joining us. And I hope to see you next time on Coffee.